Okay, so inside of React Kindling, we've been working to try to get the tests to function. So I think I've finally managed to get them to basically work. So I wanted to run through uh, kind of how that happens, kind of the setup, and maybe write one quick test. So we switched from Jest over to Karma, um, mainly because I had so many problems with Jest that I just gave up. Karma runs continually in the background. Um, it runs its tests in any browser you choose, like Chrome or Phantom or Firefox, and I've set up the configuration for any of those. So for now, this seems like uh, the best way to go. Okay, so we have uh, this karma.conf, which is a file that you put in the root of your directory. If you want to take a look at it, you can just go pull down the React Kindling project, spent a fair amount of time getting this set up just right so that it would test uh, our project. There's still a couple of issues that I'm trying to deal with. The source maps are still not working exactly like we need, but everything else seems to be working. And it does generate a coverage report, which is also nice. So if you look in the coverage directory after you run the tests, um, you can actually see the code coverage report. So you can see that our code coverage is actually kind of lousy at the moment. We're working on it. Um, but that's kind of handy so that you know what tests need to be added. OK, so now let's go ahead and, well, let's walk through just a couple more specific pieces. So I added this helper method. Um, all that it does is it adds a method to the prototype as a bind method to the prototype. This is used by PhantomJS. If you don't have this, PhantomJS will crash when you run the tests. I found this, somebody else had pointed out this issue. Uh, let's see what else is interesting in here. The tests webpack.js, uh, in most of the Karma um, instructions you'll find associated with webpack, you'll see something that looks like this, where basically they pull out all of the tests in the test directory and feed them to Webpack so that that gets dumped into one giant um, single file for our testing. I've also set this up so that you can um, do these one at a time. So if you want to just run, uh, well, rather if you want to package each of the tests using Webpack, uh, you can do them one at a time. All right, we're gonna leave them all set up to run as one giant bundle of code. So now let's go look at a test. Um, I've got this login JSX file. Let's write a simple test for that. So if I go into the specs directory, we could call it tests. I chose specs just because that's what everybody's familiar with from Rails. Uh, so we're going to go into the sessions directory. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it login.spec.js. Um, anything that is named.spec.js, the test runner will automatically pick it up and, and run those tests. So let's go grab some of that code and start writing it. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste some of this for the sake of speed. Okay, so we're going to import React. We're going to import test utils from React. We're going to import the login component. And we have to import this stub router context object as well. And that's because we're using React Router and if you use any of the methods from React Router, for example, link inside of your component, which I believe we do, uh, down here in the render method, there is a link right here. Uh, then you have to you have to encapsulate your component in this stub router context so that um, all of the different methods that React Router use are are available and stubbed out. And if you look at that code, it's just it's just basic. It basically declares that these methods exist, and then they don't do anything. OK. So let's add some more code. Let's write a basic test. So we're going to describe the login, login component. And I've set up uh, the test to use Jasmine. So it kind of looks sort of like RSpec, which is familiar, or should be familiar. Um, so let's just do a simple test and say it renders the login component. All 
Okay, so when we render it, we're going to have to grab, let's see, let's inject. Okay, so this is the part where we surround our component, which is the login component with the uh, router context. And then what we can do is use test utils from React. And we're just going to render that subject. And we can use GSX here, which is kind of nice. OK, but we haven't actually tested anything yet. So now we want to test and see if the login exists, for example. So we'll expect login um, to be defined. So this doesn't really test much more than, hey, there was something rendered. But that's good enough for the example here. So now what we'll do is we'll go out and if you just run karma start, or we've set up the project so you can run npm test, it'll actually launch a web browser. So it's running over here and, and execute the tests inside of the web browser. So now we can see that oh, login is not defined. So we did something wrong in our tests. So we probably should be more careful when we write our code. But you notice when I changed that, it ran them automatically. I didn't have to do anything else. It just runs them in the background, continuing. All right, so that's how you set up basic tests. Uh, I wanted to point out, if I can find the window, here is the React Test Utils documentation, which is out on the React website. You can pull down, um, you can see there's all these different methods available to you. Render into document is the one we use fairly frequently. Um, you can find components in the page. So you typically won't call find all in rendered tree. These other methods are, are going to use that. So this will find all components with a class. This will find one component with a class. It'll actually throw errors if it finds more than one component with a given class. Uh, and I'll post this to the, uh, the video upload.